bringing you the news, leading you to much success with all their insightful views. Do you grow yourself or buy from the top shelf? Are you here to take the reins and gain back your health? Whatever it is, you know the biz. Even like crack the pipe and let's get on with it. If you want to acquire the knowledge, you don't have to go to college. You can just come here. Welcome to the Elevated News Podcast for Two Dope Dudes. We're a podcast focused on discussing local and national cannabis news and culture. I am Aaron. Hey, I'm Dave. Hey, what's up, dude? How are you? No, oh, just living the dream. Just just existing in fall. Well, day two, huh? Day two of fall. The leaves have already fallen. Yep. Uh, I got to go play some disc golf before, Well, after it rains. I bet all the leaves are down. All the leaves are brown. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, and, no, I... I'm uh, I'm not looking forward to the winter. Yeah. No. And it'll get here fast, I think. I know. Yeah. I mean, it's almost October. Holy shit. Hey, you're going to do a sober October this year again? I was thinking about that, you know? Yeah. Might just be too stressed out in my life to do it. Oh, that's... Maybe. Yeah, I mean, I use cannabis as my daily driver for stress alleviation sure. and to be at a point where <laughs> stress is a consistent at some you know i mean at least for 40 hours a week there's so some maybe stress. maybe october we'll just we should work on some uh de-stress techniques instead of being sober october maybe we should extra do that i like that yeah maybe something like that yeah. maybe we could find something in our uh dave explains cannabinoids Oh, uh, maybe we can do something for de-stressing in October. Oh, for, for for those sober October people or non-sober October people yeah, like, or yeah, just for the people you, in general. I contemplated doing it. Yeah, I also don't want to ruin my tolerance again. Yeah, it's been nice to have a tolerance. <laughs> it's real. Yeah, some you know, I mean, we've spent good money to get to this level of tolerance. Yeah, no kidding. You know? No kidding. Yeah. And uh, I don't think there's much wrong with it, you know? Maybe we should see how deep we can go in October. Maybe we should just go the opposite. Double? Just, just double everything October. Yeah. What do you think? No. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm good. I have too much stuff to do. Yeah. Yeah, touche. Yeah. Yeah, I literally wouldn't have enough time to double my consumption. I'm squeezing in consumption in between In between, doing. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Cool products coming out on the market too. So a lot of shit. Yeah, a lot of good stuff. Yeah, a lot of good stuff. Uh, let's get in some plugs, and then we'll just get in the show today because we got some cool stuff to talk about, and then we get to talk about you know CBD at the end. Yeah. Yeah. Love that stuff. Fuck yeah. Love it. If you grow, you know, having the right gear for your home garden makes all the difference. That's why you need to get on board with Crop Culture's quarterly home grower boxes. Crop Culture releases insane value boxes every three months packed with premium seeds, growing equipment, and unique extras tailored for those who want to plant with a purpose. But that's not all. Coming soon, they're launching monthly crop drops where you can snag a pack or two of fire genetics along with must-have gardening accessories like AC Infinity's legendary trimming scissors. We're talking stickers, mystery goodies, and deeply discounted bundles you won't find anywhere else. Just an easy one-time purchase with no commitment. Their current quarterly box is an absolute steal, featuring top shelf genetics, a pH meter, or smell proof bag, monitoring tools, fermented plant probiotics, and more. And for our listeners, use the code TUDOPEDUDES for $10 off any purchase of $100 or more at cropculture.net. So, whether you want the full quarterly experience or just need a regular re up, Crop Culture has got you covered. Level up your garden and score some gear that'll have your plants standing tall. If you grow, you know you need to check them out at cropculture.net before sold-out regret sets in. Let them help you plant with a purpose. Hey, can of curious connoisseurs, are you looking to elevate your wellness routine? Take it up a notch with Mr. CBD Chicago. That's right, dude. They've got everything you need from their brand new El Jefe line. 
with CBD and THC sprays for a discreet and convenient dose. To their legendary Moonrock, Matt, Bottle Rockets, and the always satisfying Spliff Society pre-rolls. And listen up, 2 Dope Dude listeners. Use the code 2 Dope Dudes at checkout for 10% off your entire order at MrCBDChicago.com. That's right, 10% off. So ditch the stress and embrace the good vibes with Mr. CBD Chicago. Head over to their website today. Just remember, use the code 2 Dope Dudes for that sweet discount. You're not going to regret it. Hey there, fellow plant enthusiasts. Tired of using chemical fertilizers that harm your soil and the environment? We feel you. That's why we want to introduce you to Green Grow Biologic. Green Grow offers organic soil amendments packed with beneficial bacteria and mycorrhizae fungi like their popular Pride Bloom Fertilizer and Flower Finisher. These little powerhouses work together to improve your soil health, helping your plants grow strong and healthy naturally. Whether you're a seasoned gardener or just starting out, Green Grow has something for you. And because Green Grow is committed to sustainable practices, you can feel good about what you're putting into your home and garden. Head over to thegreengrow.com to learn more about their amazing products and how they can help you take your gardening to the next level. And listen up, because here's a special offer just for our listeners. Use the code 2 Dudes for 10% off your entire order at thegreengrow.com. That's 2 Dudes for 10% off at greengrow.com. Happy planting! Uh, obviously, you can find us the Elevated News Podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and all your other favorite podcasts and streaming apps. Two Dope Dudes YouTube channel. Please give us a like and leave a review. This helps us reach more people. We appreciate your comments. We appreciate people hanging out. It's the best. You can find us on supportdopepeople.com, along with links to our other pods and free stickers just by providing your email and address. There's also some discount codes on there. Uh, order shirts. I got sweatshirts. Uh up nice. on the store too. Uh, one one person has ordered them, which is super cool. Fire. Oh yeah. And then uh, you can email us two dope dudes podcast at gmail dot com for all your questions or things you want us to talk about. David, what are you doing on Thursday? Why don't you come hang out with me? Eight p.m. I know it's a little bit late for some of you, but for some of you, it's been perfect. I've been hanging out with a lot of you, and I've had a lot of fun. Um, but I'm there for cannabis conversation. Yeah. If you have any questions, especially on how to use cannabis medicinally, what products mm-hmm. might be the best for you, um, we'll look at your local dispensaries and kind yeah. of go over it. You have a seasoned bud tender at your dispense. That's right. Yeah. One of the one of the OG, one of the, the pre-rec OG bud tenders. Oh, let me tell you. Couldn't recommend you more. <laughs> I... Promise you all, I love everybody in this whole entire thing, but there are a lot of people who will give you some really bad information really yeah. quick. There's some weird questions. Hey. Can we talk about that? Yeah. Can we talk about what I saw on Instagram that Please. was so funny? Uh, oh, the flavors positive. Yeah, the flavor. You know, somebody, uh, somebody did uh, some uh, one of. You- the people that you work with did some uh, social media yeah. on Instagram. What are the uh, weirdest questions you've been asked? And yeah. one of the first ones was, do you have flavored suppositories? Yeah. And they did not know that the anus and testicles actually do have taste buds. Taste buds. Yeah. Not everybody can. No, not everybody, but no. it, it is it is possible. Did, yeah. did you show that clip to them? No. Oh, why not? I don't think I've seen them yet. Oh, okay. Are you yeah. going to show them that clip? I, I definitely tagged them in that. I went Did back you? and found that reel. That's amazing. Yes, Thank I definitely you. tagged uh, that company. That's amazing. Thank you. That's hilarious. Um, well, and that's the thing is that it's it's just <sighs> I'm not trying to be a medical professional. I genuinely <laughs> don't care. But there are just basics to this thing that aren't that hard to understand. Mm-hmm. And I've tried my hardest to go, hey. Why are you worried about neuridol or whatever the fuck it is? Though, is it beneficial? Yes. How many other places in nature do we find it? And are we exposed to it? Because there's others, right? Right. And the same thing with beta caryophylline and Mm -hmm. shit. If people go, I need the caryophylline because, well, how much black pepper are you eating in your life too? Because there's a better chance that you're consuming some of it to begin. But... um, no, it's, it's, I don't know. I just wish that the basics of cannabis were understood. Methods yep. of ingestion, cannabinoids, and mm-hmm. basic understandings of terpenoids. And there, then from there. There are some people out there promoting some of that stuff. You know, the, our uh, our new friends up at Spark Crystal Lake. 
Sparked, uh, run that. Yeah, yeah, we really, they, uh, uh, you know, took a video and kind of edited it around for us and, and just like posted it on their, their stuff and had really good things to say about it. And then the funniest thing was like the first part of it was just you going, yeah, the taxes are shit. The taxes are shit. I mean, obviously the taxes are, but yeah. they're like, yeah, these guys obviously get it. So yeah. like, well, and that's that's it too. Is there are people that understand, and yeah. there's people that get it. Yeah, yeah. our friends at uh, Trinity Glen who always come out to our, our at, you know my educational events. Those are you know like there are people out there at dispensaries who are trying to understand things and do understand things on other levels. I would and, even and which is great venture enough to tell you that most yeah. of them do, but. The information that they have consumed throughout their life comes from Leafly yeah. or personal kind of like, uh, realistically, a lot of people still exist in the, um, uh, I'm going to call it like the rap music uh, drug consumption side of things, right? Oh, like yeah, they that, still that act, perp. It's very cool. They're, it's very hip. They, you know, oh uh, yeah, no. They use a lot of slang terminology well, around it, and I'm not mad. I'm genuinely not trying are, to be an there asshole. Are, there are actual companies in our state, like um, take for instance, 93 Boys. They uh, heavily promote that use, so there's still like you know a a facet of the well, industry like you know lobo with their and nothing bad about any of like 93 boys or lobo i don't i'm not personally saying but anything yeah, bad isn't 93 boys that's like chance the rapper and somebody so it's actually rap artists and i'm not 100%, mad at it right that's I what i'm literally, saying it's, yes. it's, it's purely just the misinformation that tags right. directly along with it the amount of people who come in still and i've heard it probably I mean, since I've started, it's got to be 10, 15, 20 times, genuinely. Right. The amount of people that come in and say, I don't really care, just give me the most loud. Yeah. And I go, but does that even make any sense to you? Because, And then you call it the most loud, we tell you what it is, then you go, hey, wait a minute, isn't that honey buns fucking 36 percent that's yeah. got the highest THC? And I go, yeah, but that was grown by fucking nature's grace. And I'm not saying that they're not yeah. Good enough smoke, you're going to get intoxicated from it, whatever. But you just asked me what the best was, right? right. And that's what I thought. And I don't, that's where there's this opinions, weird Opinions are subjective, you know what I mean? And it's, so it's, uh, it's a lot for a lot of the regular consumer to understand the difference between THC and CBD and, and et cetera, et cetera. They just want what's fire or, you know, what the latest, and if you know, that's cereal case, milk stuff. So, well, bingo, you know, like, and that's fine. It's it's just, right. It, I just don't, uh, even when somebody says that, I don't understand. I don't think they understand. And that's, yeah. I guess, more it. How do we all communicate on a common level where sure. all of us understand? Yeah. And if somebody comes in and goes, hey, let me get the loud, I understand what right. that means, right? But, the but I understand standing, what it means to me. Yeah, the person next to you may not understand what it means. And, Timmy B, he, he's like the loudest person I know, but he wouldn't know loud if it hit him in the face. Being, well, I mean... I'm just kidding, Timmy B. He, actually, he don't watch he anyway. He only sells the most fire fire it's cool to watch him go because he's like why would you why would you smoke that's not the best and and yeah. people will literally go okay like they're they're sketched out because the shit says 36 percent on right. it and the one that he's gonna sell him says 22 and he goes that i promise you you're yeah. you're gonna buy some well, hunk. don't do he, it yeah it's because he's he's i mean he was in cultivation too yeah. you know what i mean and like he understands plus he's like that dude yeah, Tim, yeah. Timmy B knows what's loud. Well, and I and that's what I'm saying. It's just, I just it's attracting the right people and you know paying them the right amount. A lot of these dispensaries don't even compensate, you know, people adequately, or even have anything that's like, you know, gonna attract actual talent and and make you anybody can attract talent, but making talent want to stay and accurately. I mean, this is just my personal my personal experiences, but like keeping the talent around, if you're not compensating them or, or letting them, you know, uh, letting them in or letting them do what they need to do. I mean, that's why you keep losing talent. And that's why the industry kind of sucks right now. Cause nobody wants to get paid 1750 an hour to 
talk to people in a dispensary with a line out the door. I can go to Best Buy and do that. Well, and even then, and it's to, less regulation. To not, everybody Ooh, I, pretends that this I get is some penny just some sometimes. fucking retail establishment, and that all we have right. to do is sell them the flavor of the fucking month, right? Which is partially true, right? That is the rap side of things, I think, more. And yeah. I'm not saying it again. I'm not trying to be whatever. Sure. I just genuinely, that's that side of it. Cool ass packaging, yeah. high percentages, fancy names to represent sure. their shit, fucking whatever. Accurate marketing. I mean, but like, you know, that's a whole other thing in itself either, you know, uh, just marketing because, no, and you know, I, I, I know some insides on some people. I know some marketing people different companies and they're all the same it's like whatever is hot this minute and well, last dude, minute it's, it's literally i mean we've state, got that state it's it's we have it itemized and visualized yeah. in the essence of the mike tyson brand right sure. it's literally the bitten off ear how <laughs> great is that as a fucking uh, it piece used to of, be it used to be you couldn't do that it's amazing he's a, whoever did the mike tyson's line of things is a fucking genius knockout og yeah fucking just everything that is mike tyson related yeah. people are just gonna buy weed anyway right like the second that they come in and they see some little gimmicky shit like that they go oh, okay maybe i'll just buy that instead because i fucks with mike tyson yeah right well, so i guess it's kind of gimmicky you're, you're like do, yo go i got ahead. the mike tyson but weed like i 10 times over can reassure you the mike tyson shit cost one and a half times as much 100%. as and, and, everything and else as and it's not as good and i'm not trying to be rude towards the stuff that we have yeah. and represent but it's now you've paid a lot for fucking packaging yeah. and branding and absolutely that's that's half the game though too hey and don't be mad like hey if you can get it get it get it it's it's hard out there for a pimp mm -hmm. trust me we've talked to him man it's hustle whatever you can but i just oh yeah 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 welcome to welcome to cannabis yeah welcome to cannabis i mean it's almost winter time so it'll be right into that too and then we'll be at holiday time and extended hour season yeah. and weird yeah uh, thanksgiving holiday season and, well yeah. we passed 420 we passed you know dabs dabs whatever yeah 710 but, yeah but Oil then Day. you have uh green wednesday black oh, sure. friday um those two days tend to Didn't be you start on black friday last year no, I started on 420 this year. Oh, that's right. I knew it was something. It was something crazy. And I started on 710 in one of my jobs. That was Vera Life back in the day. Nice. And then uh, yeah, yeah, I started this most recent one. My first day was 420. Nice. Yeah. Trained somewhere else for four days. Yep. Knew nothing of what I was walking into. Walked in on 420 to the... To the chaos. Madness. And in a place that I've never been before. And you can't be helpful, really, on your first day. You're, you're a hindrance. Sh sh schlup, you know? Yeah. yeah. I'm like, hey, somebody show me what to do. Yeah. 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 And then the computer system went down for... Nationwide, too. Oh, my God. Good times. Good yeah. Welcome to cannabis. Welcome to cannabis. Hey, uh, speaking of cannabis. Hey. Our last episode. Real nice. Uh, we got some cool comments. Uh, new people, too. Uh, Laszlo, what does that say? Wood, Woodbine. Woodbine. Sorry, I can't read it. That, uh, nice chat, guys. Seriously, Mellow. Thank you, Laszlo. Thank you. That's fire. Hello, I like Laszlo. that. Uh, Michael McLaughlin. These guys know what's up. Michael. Thank You're you. You're awesome. I appreciate it. Yeah. Mr. Rourke, one of the, uh, the grower gromies. Good afternoon, gromies. What's going on, brother? What's up? He's in the live chat. There's Sweet. Lots of nice live chat. We always, uh. You get the live chat replay is actually pretty cool. You know, once you like get here and you're like, oh yeah, look at all this. Oh, you know, what I mean, cool. Macho's in there. That's you know, cool. Some other people, Mr. Work, yeah. Shy Town, Hi Fi, Tyler Quick. Yeah. Join That's the live super. chat. If you're not in the live chat on Wednesdays around noon, you know, this is why you got to like and subscribe. Click that notification bell so you know when we go live. Dave shows up in the live chat sometimes, too, when he gets a lunch. You never know. I, yeah. Macho it's, shows up every week. It's mostly when I'm like, I can't take this anymore. Huh? I have to escape. 
I do that a lot. Sometimes I'll when you're like on Thursdays, I'll uh, just put you in the. I used to do that on Mondays at work, and put you in the headphones and just listen to you talk. I appreciate that. Oh yeah. Hey, Illinois News Giant. Let's get into this so we can get into the other stuff. Illinois continues strong cannabis sales for July and August. Oh. After not announcing the monthly totals for July, uh, Illinois Department of Financial and Professional Regulation announced today, this was September 19th, rec cannabis sales totals for July and August 2024 for the fifth straight month, Illinois sales totaled at at least $141 million. July totals were 143 million and change, and August sales 147 and change. Uh, the third highest month total since legalization. And then they go through a uh, um, number of cannabis items: 32 million out of state. That's dope. Dispensary sold 4 million cannabis items. In-state resident sales 114 million. Nice. Yeah. Well. Wow. Um, We're projected to surpass by year's end the 2023 record yearly totals of 1.63 billion. Jesus yep. Christ, that's a moving industry. Yeah, it's a moving industry, and I mean it's it's ever growing, right? So right. like, it's not really though because maybe not at the rate that the actual footprint is growing, right? right? Because we see this number slowly increase from month to month, right? But we've seen the number of fucking dispensaries explode mm -hmm. almost. It's double and then some. Yep. With how many more that still have to come out? A hundred and something or whatever. Right. Um, we also didn't see a as drastic of an increase in uh, the supply chain either. Nope. Right? So you know, I was thinking about it's this the stagnant. other day. At 5,000 square feet. Right. <laughs> If one of the monsters can keep 220,000 or something like that, I think is what it is, 220,000 square feet yeah. is the maximum or some shit, um, it would take you 44 craft grow licenses to equal one of the big people. And everybody came, what did we get, fucking 100 craft grow licenses or some shit like well, that? Well, it's expanded to 14,000 feet now isn't it but you have to do that in three thousand sure. foot increments based off of your ability to, to sell. sell right so is, you at least have to do the five thousand to start and right. then progressively sure. get your allotment increased um but even if let's say it's a hundred of them what is uh, that's like adding two more of the monster cultivators yeah. right like I don't know. It just doesn't the the numbers when I when you think about them in reality. I don't know. It's still set up for the big people to keep being big and keep hustling the way that they are. Welcome to Illinois, though, right? Like uh -huh. Illinois is, you know, might as well be the whole monopoly board. I mean, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. So I got a couple cool things. I did want to talk about the Supreme Court stuff, but I want to save that for. Later, because uh, I'm sure that'll be a long discussion. Yeah. Don't ahead. you think? Uh, I want to talk about Missouri issues another cannabis recall and rolls back the hemp ban. This is from a like, green market report. Uh, State's Department of Health and Senior Services will focus its efforts on misbranded products rather than intoxicating ones. I was just down in St. Louis this weekend uh, doing a show at a grow shop, and that was pretty cool. They have a very interesting uh, growers market down there. Uh, I think it's kind of up and coming, but there's a lot of uh, a lot. Of, I met some hemp farmers down there. That was pretty cool. Okay, and they're really into the organics down there, which is pretty fire. Nice. Yeah. So I wanted to talk about this, too, because we had talked about it earlier. Missouri cannabis regulator, regulators continued their scrutiny of the industry's compliance this week with their fifth recall since the adult use marijuana market launched, this time recalling more than 23,000 goods for improper safety testing, while also announcing that many intoxicating hemp goods will be exempt from a new law that initially banned most of the products. Oh, my God. Yep. Uh-oh. So... They issued the recall on Tuesday after discovering the relevant products were not compliantly mandatory tested by Clearwater Science, one of the state's cannabis testing labs, according to the press release issued on Tuesday 
by the Department of Health and Senior Services. So there's, I guess there's a verification. Uh, uh, yeah, it's a testing yeah. thing. But yeah, the, in the state even, I think um, here has done that a couple mm -hmm. of times. They've thrown some recalls at. They're just not whatever vocal about it. Well, and it's been mm -hmm. like just a few batches of sure. some things here and there. 23,000 products. And I don't know if that's 23,000 actual just individual units of something. Mm -hmm. Um, or 23,000 different, or 2,300, I don't know what the fuck it was, different SKUs of shit, because that would be fucking aggressive, too. But regardless, um... Total of goods recalled is now near 200,000 products in Missouri since they started. Yeah, I would imagine... These are the that... same people who raided that VFW, the oh. Department of Health and Senior Services. Oh, you see what I'm saying? Uh, now, hold, right, that's how this ties in. And then also this week, an attorney for DHSS wrote in a letter to a hemp trade association that the executive order from Governor Mike Parsons last month that attempted to ban intoxicating hemp goods would not imply to hemp-based products with THC. The quote says, in regard to psychoactive cannabis products, the department will focus its effort on the identification of misbranded products, Richard Moore wrote to the Missouri Hemp Trade Association, which filed suit against the state last month over the ban. I trust that you understand that the consumption of these products may be dangerous, Moore wrote to the hemp companies, and that under no circumstances should they end up in the hands of Missouri's children. Man, it'd be a lot... No, I won't even say that. Uh, they'd just be a lot chiller. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I've... Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, don't give better, cannabis better to kids. Better than to get into your right. fucking uh, Brownie, liquor cabinet, yeah. Mr. Moore, don't you think? Moore said his office would only be targeting goods that are misbranded to target kids for potential enforcement under the state's Merchandising Practices you know, Act. You know what they just started putting in fucking Mountain Dew cans and in simply lemonade cans Dildos? and in simply uh, alcohol. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. So... Whatever. I mean, we should we should target the really big ones that are misbranded and regularly available and easily mixable with the things that don't have alcohol in them. Uh -huh. I would imagine that that's a good fucking start. But, you know, once you become a governor, you get to pay attention to whatever somebody pays you to pay attention to. So good for you. Well, it's because <clears throat> legislation is never going to do anything. Although, obviously, uh, as I've said before, both sides always come together when there is a... Uh, you know, a uh, funding bill on the floor. And, you know, they tried to say that the government was going to get shut down again. And look what happened. Always happens. Uh, they yeah. keep funding all of it. Yeah. So anything else, they don't have any interest in doing. So that's why the governors have to, you know, uh, you know, have to rule by, uh, by writ. You know? Uh, I just, yep. Welcome to uh, welcome to cannabis. Yeah, welcome to everything. Yeah. <laughs> welcome to cannabis. Hey, this was actually some really cool stuff that uh, you know. Sometimes things go in our favor. I mean, that has for, at least for this part, it is it is good. Uh, Illinois Supreme Court rules cannabis aroma alone is insufficient probable cause to search a vehicle. Which obviously we know. There's some other things that they've done within this. I mean, obviously, uh, you know, if some dude wants to be an asshole, he's going to be an asshole. He's going to get you. But at least they ruled in our favor on this. We're still waiting on them to rule uh, as to the smell proof containers. Well, and so that's here's another the part thing. of that. that they is... ruled directly, which means that. The next time that you get pulled over and they directly say that the reason they pulled you out of your vehicle is for cannabis scent alone, right. that you're going to beat the litigation side of it. You will still go through the yep. litigation of it. Yep. They will still force you to get representation yep. unless you're capable of representing yourself, which I highly don't recommend. Yep. Um, because those unless people you're a lawyer. Are, well, and then that's a good idea. But there are a lot of – this shit is the most broken part – we were talking about this the other I was actually talking about this heavily today, how broken yeah. um trading fucking criminals as uh, you know, the new slaves is and we've been doing that for a long time and the people that we consider to be fucking criminals 
like a lot of us can agree, fucking probably aren't as big of criminals as we keep trading them like. Right. And, you know, if it costs fucking $56,000 to keep an inmate incarcerated, right? Uh, we should probably just make that motherfucker go do some work. I think it's probably a yeah. better use of talent than to fucking force all of us to pretend to pay them to make some fake fucking funds out of thin air. Just print more money, dude. Yep. You'll be all right. Yep. You're getting it now, Dave. Yep. It's all... It. I mean, You're dude, doing it, Peter. You're, you're flying. It's all a... Uh, <laughs> It's it's all a very huh. sick and twisted game to make, which makes um, warms my ANCAP libertarian heart to hear it, you talk about talk about this. Yeah. So great. Well, dude, it's, it's, it saddens the fuck out of me now. You know, the more that I get involved into a, I watch the trade of cannabis, the purchasing and sales of cannabis at a rate. That probably not too many people, and and it, what I'm doing now is not even a tenth, literally a right. tenth of some of the times where I've been inside right. dispensaries. Um, it's it's weird to th- think that it's okay for me to do this to uh, to tax everybody at the rate that we are um, to criminalize the people. I don't know. It's such a fucking weird, vicious bunch of bullshit that doesn't really lean well to any of us um i don't know getting the i you know what are people using any of these things for to begin with it's to probably escape from the bullshit that fucking is to begin yeah 100 percent. hey so this decision stems from people versus redmond a case in which law enforcement used the smell of burnt cannabis as probable cause to search the individual's vehicle the Illinois Supreme Court heard oral arguments from the case in January. Uh, this is important because Illinois is still writing laws to, you know, to criminalize cannabis, like to put people in jail for cannabis. You can load it. You can hit that. Uh, just hit that again. I put a big old dab in there if you want. Oh, I'm all right. This is actually one of my oh, favorite nice. sipping things here now. The conclusion on the people. Oh, yeah, I said that. Uh, We also hold that the totality of facts and circumstances known to Officer Combs did not provide probable cause to search Redmond's vehicle. Therefore, the circuit court correctly granted the motion suppressing the evidence confiscated from Redmond. Accordingly, we affirm the appellate court decision affirming the trial court's order suppressing the evidence seized in the warrantless search of Redmond's car. Yep, warrantless, which is the biggest word there, like... It'll still happen, and you'll still go through the process. There will still be people in Illinois, and you can even sit there and go, I know my rights. I know whatever. If these people want to fucking yoink you out of your fucking car and whatever, they're strong-arming the fuck out of people out there now. So just be, be nice. Let them go through the process, you know? And, I mean, be cognizant of what our carrying rights are right it's 30 grams five grams of concentrate and two and a half or 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 five grams of concentrate and 500 milligrams of edibles correct and that is if you are just an illinois resident if you're not and uh you come into illinois you are allowed half of that 15 grams of flour two and a half grams of concentrate 250 milligrams edibles and if you have a medical license you see this is why we advocate for medical licenses quite a bit as well your carry limit goes up Mm -hmm. you also sometimes you might be carrying a grocery bag full of buds I mean, literally, I've had people that have had medical cards in the state of Illinois allowed to purchase every two weeks 16 ounces of cannabis. It's their purchase limit biweekly, but it's also their carry limit. They're allowed to carry then 16 ounces of cannabis. Um, And again, what are we doing, right? Like if whatever you need to do for your life, it all exists out there. Just wait till I read what he was actually found with. Let's hear it. The opinion in this ruling stated, in this case, we must determine after the recent changes to Illinois cannabis laws, whether a police officer's detection of the odor of burnt cannabis considered alone or in conjunction with other facts provides probable cause to conduct a warrantless search of a vehicle. Illinois State Police Officer Hayden Combs conducted a search of Ryan Redmond's vehicle based on, inter alia, his detection of the strong odor of burnt cannabis 
emanating from the vehicle. The state primarily argues that Combs had probable cause to suspect that a search of the vehicle would uncover evidence that cannabis was improperly contained in the vehicle. Or, first part is that he was, what this says is the state primarily argues that Combs had probable cause to suspect that somebody was that the police officer would uncover evidence that the can cannabis was not properly stored or that more likely uncover evidence that Redmond had used cannabis on his trip from Des Moines to Chicago. The It says C-625 ILCS, the statute, <clears throat> no driver may use cannabis within the passenger area of any motor vehicle motor vehicle upon a highway in the state. Combs searched Redmond's car and found one gram of cannabis inside the center console in a plastic bag. What was... I, one I, gram I wonder, of cannabis he found. And he detained him and shit? Obviously, if he's gone through a court yeah. case of it, yeah. He was charged with unlawful possession of cannabis in violation of Section 4 of the Cannabis Control Act. Uh... And unlawful possession of cannabis by a driver in violation of Section 11-50215B of the Illinois Vehicle Code. He filed, uh, Redmond filed a motion to suppress the cannabis. The Henry County Circuit Court granted the motion, and the appellate court affirmed, holding that the recent changes to the law pertaining to cannabis made the owner, odor of burnt cannabis standing alone insufficient to justify a warrantless search of an automobile. Wow. One gram. Bye. One gram. Well, and but that's what I'm telling you is it doesn't matter who it is because if you Correct. run into combs when you're out there too, you're yeah. fucked. And it's, uh, I, you it's know, it's why you got to have a medical license and you got to properly store your cannabis. I recommend like an uh, airy bag, or I recommend going up to Canna Equity Coalition tent when you see them at an event. Give them your email, and they'll give you a lockable bag. I've given a lot of my friends lockable bags. They're great stuff. Yeah, I, I again, it's who you run into, sure. period. But um, you guys should be aware of... Like I said, it's all how you get around it and how you handle it. Yep. Right. Don't be I've an been, asshole. I've been in the recent past pulled over with cannabis mm -hmm. in my fucking pocket. Mm -hmm. Thank God I had a completely clean pipe. Yep. 100% clean. Just got it out of the fucking rubbing alcohol and salt. Nice. Mm -hmm. And a 100% fully packed grinder. Yep. I literally threw it into my pocket. It was in the winter. Yep. Had the overcoat. I remember. Threw it in my I remember pocket. That. It was went a Thursday. Out. Yep. It sure enough was. You came on stream. You're like, check this shit out. And they, when they sent me home, they put the cannabis back into my middle console. I was driving down the street. I didn't know. I looked up. I opened my fucking middle console, and there was my grinder and pipe in there. And I was like, what the fuck just happened? They well, you were, literally... you were more mad about the other thing. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you were, you were, you were mad about the other thing. Mad fucking ness. Yeah, I know. Um, but yeah, so there you go. That's, I've had similar um, experiences. It's just weird that like, and they were very nice to me, about all except for one guy. No, it was the chick. One guy had a little short man oh, fucking yeah, yeah, syndrome, right. and he wanted to put me in the car, and I said, the... Lady officer said I didn't have to go in the car. And then he was like, you're sitting in there. And then the other tall dude was like, no, he doesn't have to, bro. Like, just fucking yeah. quit being a tiny man, you know? <laughs> but that's the fucking unfortunate truth. And we should probably just have all the cops fucking finally speak up and tell us who the fucking weirdos are. And we'll get them out. Yeah. Vote them off the island, bro. Yeah. Get rid of the fucking weirdos yeah. out there. And, but I literally talked to one of my cop friends. He said, you knew who the pieces of shit were. You knew who the brown nosers were, and you knew who the guy who, who had the itchiest trigger finger. Yep. We all know who's who. Why don't we fucking do something about that shit? I don't want to fucking... Who's going to do something about it? I ain't going to fucking... Do, yeah, you I'm know? just trying Everybody to... Everybody got I'm, a goddamn answer. Yeah, I'm just trying <laughs> to go to work and do my job. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Yeah. Nobody's accountable until that fucker does some weird shit. So with this, they they we are still uh, they have still yet to rule on the uh, proper uh, storage container, um, and they also put this in with a different. They assigned it to a 
different case as well or attached it to a different case. So we'll see how that um, plays out. That that's and, and uh, this is the, the person who's done a lot of good work on it is uh, you know uh, Cole over yeah. at Chillinoys. You should definitely he's 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 got his latest podcast uh, talk. He talks with an actual uh, a lawyer about this. So um, yeah. Nice. I'm sure he covers it much better than we do. We're just the two dope dudes talking, Shh. talking about shit. Two dope dude dudes bringing fire. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I. So more to more to come on like this. I I'm said, sure. Just know your limits. Don't overexceed them. Be careful. Out of arm's reach is not the answer. Nope. Um, it's got to be like with intent to not consume. Yeah. is the bigger part there. Like yeah. I. I cannot get into my trunk while I drive. I have a closable trunk. If right. you have an SUV, um, you don't have a closable trunk like that, but you probably got a little space where your spare tire goes in back there. If not, you have a lockable bag mm -hmm. or something that shows intent for yep. you not to use while traveling. Yep. It definitely will protect you longer term in the fucking uh in a court system. Don't forget, it... intent is criminalized in Illinois. That's how that's how the law works in Illinois. It is all about your intent. So if you can prove that your intent, if you you'll still get arrested, but you can go to the judge and say, "Judge, it was in a locked, smell-proof container in my back seat, and you know my." Pipe was found in my glove box after it was locked. Like, obviously, my intent was not to smoke marijuana. And that shit was hemp I bought at the gas station. Yeah. What do you mean? Did, I'm not did you test to it? Did you, I mean, yeah, make number them one, go test was, it, was it tested on site? Because once you take it off site, there is, Bingo. you know what I mean? It could go through many yep. handling many changes. situations. Yeah. Yep. You could be molecularly yep. changing it by yep. putting it too close to yep. heat or anything. We all know this. Yep. So, you know, it was, it was that um, legal hemp stuff. Yeah. It is still legal. Yeah, fucking A right it is. Fucking A right, man. Hey, let's go uh, real quick talk about this. This is a, a cool thing that I saw, and I thought you might like it. Cannabis use does not change memory or other brain functions, study says. Uh, this is some place called Leafy. Not Leafly, but Leafy. Adults who consume cannabis for a year do not show any reduction in working memory, reward, and inhibitory control brain function, a study has shown. This is a federally funded research published by the American Medical Association and the, oh, the JAMA network open, which involved 57 patients who had been newly prescribed medical cannabis. Patients were observed using functional magnetic resonance imaging or an MR, or fMRI at the start of their medical cannabis use and after 12 months at the same time similar data was also collected for non-medical cannabis patients to use as a control group the study was conducted from July 2017 to July 2020 among participants from the greater Boston area who were recruited as part of a clinical clinical trial of individuals seeking medical cannabis cards for anxiety, depression, pain, or insomnia symptoms. Nice. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. Scroll the topic in for me for yeah. one second. Um, I am... I'm down with the short term, right? Yeah. Uh, and that's that's a one year study, so that's a very good uh, result. It's 2017 and, to 2020. Okay, and we have one control it was, group, one non. It was right. the medical group that just came in, and it from, was the first time medical. So they took the fMRI at first, compared it afterwards, bingo. and throughout. Um, and I just think that when you say something like this. In short term and with proper use, mm -hmm. I fully agree. Yeah. Being misused in a very prolonged period could lead to other things. That's the only thing that, and I'm just being open and sure. honest, right? When we talk about these things, we have to know both sides of it. I love that because thank God that there's actual fucking uh, clinical trials going mm -hmm. on. And there are, there are control groups that are, that yep. are, especially going through the um, 
scary parts of it, right? Because on the surface, if somebody goes, oh, I'm going to lose my memory, I'm going to not be, right. I'm I'm out of body. That's what the word high means, right? It's some out of body disassociation mm-hmm. bullshit. So if somebody gets too worked up by that, now we have inconclusive, federally funded mm-hmm. evidence that states in the short term, you're probably fine, right? And then once anything you start to do in a prolonged Period. That's yeah. on you, right? You choose whatever you want to do. But I think this is what I'm saying. And I I think depending on what you're using it for, um, cannabis might be the, the, the fucking best for that. Not having many long term issues or, or short term issues. Right. Mm-hmm. Very, very controllable. But this is leads me right. In. I was going to start talking about it. So I know. I keep chopping up. I- I'm not going to have any music, and I'm probably never going to make, like, an intro screen for this. But, uh, hey, know your cannabinoids with Dave. do 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 I'm sure you can make a song if you really wanted to. My words? That's why I That's um, why I did it that. But well, you, you did a great flow. Thank you. My friend. I, that's, yeah. that's what I try to do. I'm, I'm, I'm here for that. Um, hey, you know, uh, I think I made a thing last time, but know your cannabinoids with Dave. do 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 bum 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 I made a little thing. Anyway, Sweet. hell yeah. Um, so yeah. Uh, so today uh, we're going to talk about CBD. Since last week we talked about THC, uh, we want to like have some short, concise. Like this is what it is. This is how it can help you. This is how you incorporate it, and try and cut those up into like little shorts so we can distribute those easier. This part of the show. So yep. today it's CBD. Yep. It's it's a phytocannabinoid, one of 113 identified cannabinoids in cannabis plants, along with THC, and accounts for up to 40% of the plant's extract. It was discovered in 1940, and as of 2022, clinical research on CBD included studies related to the treatment of anxiety, addiction, psychosis, movement disorders, and pain, but there is insufficient high-quality evidence that CBD is effective for these conditions. This is from Wikipedia, uh, so... uh, you know, uh, until it reach, reaches whatever standard they have for high quality evidence. But thank God this article just came out and it, you know, well, and we have more. Bingo. Yeah. Bingo. And um, this leads directly into what I was just talking sure. about. Um, it does unbelievable things for anxiety mm-hmm. and addiction and psychosis and things that we deal with in the mental side of things mm-hmm. as well. CBD binds more heavily to our CB2 receptors, which are more closely um, playing with our immune system. Right. We talked about that last week. Bingo. Right. But CBD's long-term effects on things like anxiety, post-traumatic stress disorder, um, addiction, uh, a lot of psychological... um, Afflictions. Uh, bingo. Because it, uh, it affects it affects the nervous system, so it right? It, well, it, and so as a byproduct of how it binds, it kind of goes more towards that? Re- no, I think that what's happening is that our body is probably getting the proper balance okay. of, right? I think that having too much of one thing may throw us out of balance of things, um, i.e. too much THC, sure. i.e. too much CBD. I think you could do too much of either one of them. Mm-hmm. What's too much, right? But Too much is, yeah. It's uh, not incorporating the other. You can do more <laughs> than... Uh, you can do more and not like the effects, but necessarily too much is actually incorrect to say. Like, so here, you know, the the best way that I ever have to talk about CBD and THC and how I have come to understand the two. Um, let's say there's a fight, the cancerous fight, right? Mm-hmm. We have the two cells that have come together. Right. They somehow started binding and now they're creating something. Abnormal uh, cells. That's correct. what cancer is. It is a not normal cell. Correct. Abnormal. CBD would come into, in these sites where things are going erratically mm-hmm. and it would play the referee to mm-hmm. what is going on. Okay. It may, 
uh, let's say if it's these two cells that are fighting each other, mm -hmm. it may play a protective coating that covers the entire thing. Yeah. It may play an in-between so that nothing else comes in, too. Mm -hmm. um, it has tons of very, like THC and CBD, cannabinoids as a whole have this whole molecular structure. Yeah. So there's so many different binding places right. where it can actually fit into whatever the fuck is going on. So if these two are fighting like this, maybe it's CBD that covers it perfectly. Sure. But CBD tends to play more the referee. It okay. tends to play more the, um, hey man, chill the fuck out. Right. Where THC may come in and go, hey boys, get the fuck out of there. And right. Fight, you know, rip the two cells apart kill the two promote apoptosis whatever it is where cbd goes hey i don't think you're supposed to do that it's very it's anti things right in the same way when we feel thc when we consume it we know that it's there boom it's there right cbd on the other hand we can consume fucking fistful of the shit and we're like do i is there anything going on with this cbd or not but it's playing on different parts you know, it's not doing the immediate psychoactive, whatever. Is that correct? Um, what's that? <clears throat> well, and th this, is, this is what I'm telling you. Right. The cannabinoids that are produced on the plant. Because right. they're, all, they're all kind of the same in, uh, at the same time well, during certain times. In it bingo. Okay, it can, I gotcha. it can it can transition through, but so what it's I just wanted to make sure because it is like it's got articles or it's from Wikipedia. Conversion of CBD to THC can occur when CBD is heated to temperatures between 250 and 300 Celsius, potentially leading to its partial transformation into THC. So it's not so much as a transformation; it's just a but different part of the way that it's breaking down. A hundred percent, but that is also at 250 or 300 right. degrees Celsius. So you have that? to hyperheat the fuck yeah, out no of this shit. thing. Um, again, some of the, I think the flame that we're throwing on yeah. stuff goes to what, 400 degrees or something, sure. maybe 500 degrees on fire. I don't really know. I'm not like some fucking molecular scientist by any means, but I do believe that because of how cannabinoids are so closely related in molecular structure, mm -hmm. you can convert most of them to being very close to the other one. Right. I don't know about... Uh, I mean, it's it said potentially it. leading to its partial yeah. transformation. It, it Just the way it was worded, I, would, I didn't want to... I would wanna... say almost not... Yeah. Yeah, it's, you know it's what a, I mean? It's a, that's what I'm saying. I think they're too beginning different structures and that's how we lead to so many but within the one fucking it plant, does say potentially so right. you know it's well, not like all the time but that's it is within that one trichome right that yeah. one little fucking ball of yeah resinous yeah. whatever all it's of oil. that exists it's oil right? we're, we're oil farmers at the end yeah we're soil and oil farmers i mean it's resin yes yeah. sticky yeah. resin is yeah yeah it's 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 within that dollop of mm -hmm. whatever the fuck it is is all of these different things and at different um, suspensions in time, sure. right? And it might have been that because of where it originally grew at or right. because of what its environment was through growing, that some of those molecular changes happen on the plant. Right. And then once you pull it from the plant, how you interact with that thing will change what it turns into next which is whether or not i mean you hyperheat the fucking shit and turn it all into cbn at the end or you know you properly heat it and convert thca properly into thc without excessively passing that point uh, and deteriorating the thc itself right because then we turn it into what cbn well i mean i don't know i think there's two or three other cannabinoids in between but there's there's plenty of space we're just capturing the molecular breakdown but anyway cbd is the question here today what is cbd fucking good at um it's anti it's anti everything yeah it is anti-anxiety anti anti-psychotic <clears throat> uh anti-fungal uh -huh. um anti-tumoral mm -hmm. um i mean anti-inflammatory mm -hmm. anti-spasmodic uh, you, I, you know, anticonvulsant, right? It's, yes. It's very good and maybe one of its best. Epilepsy. 
bingo. One and of that's its something best. like my my older brother uh, had epilepsy, has epilepsy, and uh, I witnessed a bunch of his grand mal seizures when I was very young, and uh, you know it's like it's crazy ass shit. I witnessed a. Um, I saw it recently. I might have saved it. A video of somebody um, giving an epileptic a hit of some weed during their seizure. And, you know, you're going through it, right? But they were able to put a vape Mm -hmm. into their mouth and the person was able to, like, inhale it enough. Mm -hmm. And it seemed to break that fucking... Like the second that the THC got into the system, which it takes five to ten seconds, right? Yeah, you almost could see this like that's probably somebody with difference. with not very um not very uh, severe seizures because most like uh, oh, a lot yeah, of this a person lot of the, was purely convulsing. Yeah, I mean all the way to the point of like. I mean, people were holding him yeah, up. No, but for sure. Literally, most people a... don't have control because <clears throat> of the reset. No, I, Most people, yeah. yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like that person, obviously, I'm not saying that it's not bad. I'm saying that a lot of seizures, you have no control of being able to inhale or exhale or anything like Bro, that. You're, it's you're just inhaling off. and exhaling, though. And well, if yeah. you're able to put something into somebody's mouth, they're naturally breathing. hundred percent. But I'm talking I mean? about the conscious thought to be able to control things. Oh, I don't know things. that they yeah, were. Yeah, that's yeah, what I'm yeah. saying. I'm just saying the there use are, of inhalation right, was used yeah. during a seizure, which is it's hard to exactly what you're saying to that point because they are unconscious of we could administer some fucking orals right some some sublinguals yeah but in that moment um how long one does it take to fucking ingest and two are we going to choke them by putting fucking a liquid into their mouth when they are incapable of doing things on their own and you definitely don't want to put your fingers in their mouth no do not do that because they will bite off your freaking finger yeah yeah yeah, definitely happened yeah oh and there's but that's the whole point is that what is the next way to deliver to some of these people who are going through the things and i hope that inhalation is looked at for some of this stuff yeah but um and, and with CBD as well mm-hmm. is inhalation with CBD capable of fixing the things that CBD is very capable of i.e. seizures which yeah. again can you in a temporary lap seizure which is uh, I don't know what the two are called right there's a grand mall and then right. there's another one and it, I call them temporary laps but it's mm-hmm. a it's that moment of like reset right yep. it's it's almost like the window shut down mm-hmm. um I've watched a few of those go on, and it seems like maybe there's a small amount more control sure. in a temporary lapse, right? Which maybe that's a good starting point. If anybody has any control, inhalation would be great. But also suspending cannabinoids in different aerosol forms or something yep. of that may be a beautiful fucking fix for some of this stuff. I mean, shout little... out shout out to my friend over at High Five. They have the... Uh, so lingles. Have... The, 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 yeah, the, the, strips. The, the strips. They're the only one in Illinois who yeah. who have it, which is freaking fantastic. Strips are pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, there are people out there that are legitimately trying to make medical products for people. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Not just make your uh, breath taste good. Yeah, yeah. Well, and that's, I mean... Again, method of ingestion right. means everything. Cannabinoids mean everything. And that's why THC had to be talked about last right. week. And that's why CBD has to be talked about this week. Because if any, if there's a singular one that needs to be spoken about as an essential cannabinoid, mm-hmm. the same way we say essential vitamins, and the same way that we pack vitamins into all kinds of fucking food products and everything, we just shove fucking vitamins in there. So should we do the same with with CBD. Mm -hmm. CBD is a regulator of our system, and it is something that we may have been consuming for our entire lives through our food sources, through medicine in the past, Mm -hmm. whatever, up until recently, where now our systems, who knows, right? But the our food source used to eat cannabis. Yep. Used to be a free grow free growing crop out there. Mm-hmm. So cows would eat it, mm-hmm. deer would eat it, chickens would eat it. You know, it's a great fucking hemp is a is a great feed. Um so you know, again, you can use these, it for bedding at the zoo if you, you know, knew the right people. Maybe these things that we've consumed 
in the past even that the the food that we consumed and shit had a balanced endocannabinoid right. system and it was something that we regularly were were filtering and taking care of and now because all medicine has to be synthesized and touched by some scientist mm-hmm. and measured in a laboratory and can't be fucking real or from the earth it's it's almost like some uh, you're like a, a you know I'm I'm speaking some heresy over here yeah. t- t- talking about fucking plant medicines and shit or any one of us is but um <laughs> yeah it's it's a uh there there might be something to this plant that might fix the regulation of all all of our operating systems mm-hmm. i genuinely believe that we might just have been consuming it for a much longer time through many different sources right and now because it's all regulated the way that it is um our food sources are you know grown inside warehouses and they're fed fucking hay and whatever you know i we don't we're not stimulating our system the right way so add cbd back into the diet if you can um i genuinely believe that this one cannabinoid could change a fuck ton of some of these symptoms that some of us are feeling it's unbelievable how good it is at anti-inflammatory and antispastic um, responses. And if you have fibromyalgia or multiple sclerosis, does that mean that you are going to be permanently without those symptoms? Absolutely fucking not. Because you have that condition, right? That's a reality that you exist in. But to be able to treat those two symptoms with something that is non-deteriorative long-term, um and and rather immediately gratifying depending on what you're trying to use it for uh it seems like a fucking no-brainer to me but um it's the biggest no-brainer in the history of earth yeah yeah it's th- <laughs> and that's where i think you know that's like where my biggest yeah infinity loop happens where i go wait a minute cannabis right like it make it's a no-brainer how the fuck do we not just all have access to it and whatever? And then I go work in the system and I see how the regulations are against it. And I'm going, what is wrong with humans? Right. Why are humans putting this level of regulation against humans? And what the fuck do any of these humans who are making what does these any regulations of that regulation do to no? help people? Well, what, what, why did we regulate it to begin with based mm-hmm. off of what? I, I've, I've yet to, outside of scare, outside of people being terrified, I've, I've yet to fucking see why the criminalization of this plant ever existed. And if they thought fucking 60 years ago, 70 years ago that or 80 years ago now that fucking now um, they'd be able to tax it at some super rate because yeah. they call it some whatever. Those motherfuckers are geniuses, right? To, to be able to think that far in advance. I don't think it was that. I genuinely think that too many people are scared of the shit. Watch. I, we talk about it. Watch the Theo Vaughn and fucking Donald Trump conversation. He doesn't understand drugs. I'm not saying anything rude. Well, he's a teetotaler anyway. Well, His older brother was, uh, <laughs> a drinker and got into drugs and yeah. he told him when he was young, don't, don't ever do drugs. And, and so he yeah. was scared. He, and yeah. it's right now. It's not that I wouldn't tell you that he's like, uh, I don't think it's ignorance, but I think it's a, why would I worry about that? That shit yeah. is not good. I was told it's not good. I believe it's not good. Why the fuck does anybody, it doesn't matter. He doesn't have enough interaction with people who right. use it regularly or who are willing to go, I don't know why the fuck you're tripping about this. This is not the problem, right? And, well, and I, I think, think in 20, 30 years, we're going to have enough probably government people who have actually use cannabis who understand actually what it is that it won't be like that you know what i mean oh it, it, i mean it, we just it has to change like they just put up the doobie act which is the uh that's what it's called the doobie act one of the senators they're relaxing restrictions on hiring federal employees uh who have used cannabis 
should have. No, seriously. Nice. So, like, it's stuff like that. It's the more we talk about it, you know, uh, you know, for the seven, uh, probably six billion now that are still listening. Yeah, yeah. From the first year of the seven billion, which is the whole world. That's yeah. why we say seven billion, the whole world. Yeah. Uh, you know, we just got to talk about it more. And we got to, you know, continue with cannabis culture and continue being out there and talking about the good word and trying to educate people on how to use cannabis to take their health back into their own hands, how to you know, grow cannabis medicinally so they can have clean medicine for themselves and not have to rely on the state or pay taxes or any of that other stuff, you know? Yeah. That's, it, it's, you know, that that's how we do it. We continue to fight the fight where we can and, uh, you know, talk about what's important. And this is what's important. I, to me, man, I, I think, like, if anything were to change in my lifetime where it made cannabis understandable mm -hmm. and and agreeable yeah. and like it is to begin with sure. um if that ever changed and i feel like we have gotten somewhere as a as a species yeah. if this simple fact cannot change within the lifetime that i have and it's a very they come and go quick these lives we all got right yeah statistically it's <clears throat> it's nothing so if we can't figure it out even in the short time that I'm here. I think we fail as a human. I think that all of us have probably failed for a very long time. But with the ability that we have now to communicate at the rate that we do, yeah. with with the veil being taken off, yeah. we live and, and we're lucky enough, I guess I would say, to live in a place where we can openly speak about this yeah. shit without any scrutiny or whatever. Well, I mean, the social media, I mean, we although well, we, have, we have freedom of speech, but... Um, you know, that's yeah. only, um, against, uh, from the government cannot, you know, uh, private companies can, you know, silence you and disallow you from speaking about cannabis. And well, that's there's people out true. there right now on, you know, happened, uh, you know, we got reported for cannabis on the other YouTube channel and don't do that podcast anymore. Cause it's just easier just to not do it and not deal with it. You know, I know it's lots of people on Instagram, uh, have been getting banned for, cannabis stuff and having to make new accounts you know i've i know somebody who struggled through that process pretty bad actually yeah. and it's not always easy to re-get your following back no, right not. not everybody is up to date and whatever right. and... <laughs> yeah yeah sad yeah. that's why you should email us uh yeah please yeah. um and any questions that you got about anything yeah. drop it in the comment section please for everybody who do, does comment i greatly fucking yeah. appreciate it. it's super neat it, uh, the, the, <clears throat> i love I'll, always watching the live chat because people will be like oh did, did like as it's relating to whatever we're talking about they'll tell their stories and it's cool and they share information it's a great little community and we appreciate you yeah do, I mean, we, every every one of our stories is going to make the difference. Yep. This is how the fuck it all goes down That's right. eventually. That's right. What are we talking about next week, Dave? What do you want to do? Um, uh, to be determined? We can do to be determined. I think kind of probably CBN, if anything. Okay. The one thing that I do want to mention, I know that we've talked and I'm we've gone to the end here, but CBD. Yeah. <clears throat> Wrap it up, Dave. It's one of the best things that we might have access to for unlearning traumatic experience. I think when it plays referee to the different responses, right? Even where maybe it's just playing referee to how THC is responding in our central nervous system, right? Mm -hmm. And it's regulating it to not cause a fear response. Um, CBD is one of the best things we might have access to for people with PTSD, unlearning fear behavior, yep. right? And I, I hope that um, between epilepsy and PTSD um, alone, right, I, that CBD gets out there to, I mean, Everybody, every single yeah. one of the people who suffer from those two things mm -hmm. should have uh, uncapped access to yep. CBD and, and it should be just given to you by these fucking insurance companies that we pay all this fucking money to, to begin with mm -hmm. somebody farm me some fucking CBD and start giving it to these people immediately. And don't get me wrong. It should be available at the same rate 
that fucking ibuprofen or Tylenol or fucking whatever because it's the same yep. fucking thing. Yep. Go look at the side of whatever that shit says. It says anti-inflammatory. Right the fuck on yep. it. Right. This is the most natural. Do you know that you can kill yourself with uh, aspirin on the LD50 test is 1 to 50, which means that you have the potential of toxically shocking your system with as or with uh, Tylenol, whatever the fuck, at, at um, 50 doses. You mm -hmm. have the potential of killing yourself, all right, toxically shocking yourself and killing yourself at 100 doses of fucking this stuff. We sell bottles of 100 of them out there. Yep. You have a bottle of death right the fuck mm. there. Cannabis on that same fucking rate, and we wouldn't even want to talk about CBD. THC alone is one to 50,000, um, which means that you would, depending on what your dose scale is, you'd have to do like fucking 1,500 pounds of cannabis in 15 fucking minutes, right? If you have that kind of money to afford that kind of fucking product, please come and adopt me. Yeah. I am up for adoption right now. But the reality of it is the the things that people have access to with abundance versus the things that people should have access to mm -hmm. and the, the regulation against the one versus the other, it's fucking disgusting. Yep. So hopefully... Um, within my lifetime, within our lifetimes, we get to see humans get undumb about one fucking thing. And, and I hope it's this. I hope it's respecting THC and CBD as arguably essential cannabinoids. Yep. Hey, we love you all. Smoke weed every day. Peace. Thanks. Yo, ding dong, we're done here, time to go.